Hello, Steve Cypress here on what uh, I was going to say Success Story Saturday, but of course it is still Foundation Friday, December 8, 2017, and I slip of the tongue there because I just recorded this video and then I had some sound issues and noticed there was no sound when I played it back. So I had already mentally moved on to Success Story Saturday, but now I got to do Foundation Friday over again and happily because it's a great topic. So first I'll share my rhino a day for the third day in a row. It is one of my rubber rhinos, the white rhinoceros. Uh, the only thing different about them pretty much are the name tags uh, coming from different places, different things on them, stamped from the stores. Uh, one was kind of folded and bent. This one's in beautiful condition. Doesn't say where it's from. Wild safari, white rhinoceros. And, you know, I was a little dyslexic yesterday, messing up my upside down sixes and nines because I played it back and heard that I had said this was from 1966, but it actually says copyright 1996 on the bottom. So 21-year-old adult white, white rhinoceros rubber rhino. All right, let's get right to it. All Marketers Are Liars, book by Seth Godin and a very foundational principle. And this came up because I recommended this book to a client who was just getting started and is a dream client because the client is constantly learning and he gets it. And so I don't even remember that in passing, because I was talking about we got to tell stories, we got to find the right stories to tell when he's going to launch his fantastic service that he has. Uh, as, a, as a, By the way, he has a main business that uh, he's been listening to and, and making adjustments and working with and just got a big six-figure deal with, so that's fantastic. And now we're working on a second business that he's launching that, who knows, might take over and become the primary source of income for him. Who knows? But uh, I was talking about the importance of telling stories, and I mentioned the book, Seth Godin, All Marketers Are Liars. Now, just the title of the book right there is a great example. Seth Godin could have said, hey, if you want to sell your stuff, you got to get good at telling stories. Boring, typical, common, not inflammatory. How's that going to get attention or sell books? But when he comes out and says, hey, the new Seth Godin book is all marketers are liars. Now, first of all, that's incendiary, it's inflammatory, and non-marketers, which remember, again, only 13% of people here in America are business owners, which leaves 87% of America are not business owners. They love to sacrifice their own life working for us to help make us successful and millionaires. Like, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. But they uh, are not happy to hear that, with, that marketers are liars. They would say, like, see, they lied to me when they sold me the whatever and the who and the ha. But they bought it, right? So marketers got to learn to tell stories. And as all, with all Seth Godin books, you don't really have to read the book unless you enjoy the process of the reading book. And you can put it down at any time because you can read the back cover. You can watch this video. You can read any review, and it will probably tell you what the book's all about. And then, as with all Seth Godin books, it's simply very repetitive, giving case studies and stories and examples over and over and over of what he means, backing up his theory, his thesis for the book, which is that if you're going to sell your stuff, it's not based on how good the stuff is. Sorry, it just isn't. I talk about that all the time, and that's why it's a foundational point. Hopefully you've grasped that and you understand that to sell your stuff, you've got to dig deep and get into the basic, deep, subconscious, emotional desires, wants of your chosen who, your target market, the people you want to do business with. I call it the who because that's the wow strategy that I created. The first W was the who. The last W is the way that you communicate, that you market, that you advertise, and the O is the irresistible offer that you make to them. Well, that's W-O-W, the wow strategy. Well, part of making your offer irresistible is telling a story that makes your product or service irresistible, and that is not by just telling a bunch of bullet points about your product or service. It does this, it does that, it does this, it does that, it's this size, it's this weight, it's this color, it does this. Boring, typical, common, not going to work. And then you're going to blame the way that you use to You're going to say, oh, billboards don't work, yellow pages doesn't work, email marketing doesn't work, newsletters don't work, websites don't work, Google ads don't work. You're going to blame whatever it is you're doing because you're not doing it right. You're not telling a story. Or as Seth Godin 
hideously, uh, outrageously says, you're not lying, you're not being a marketer, you're not creating those stories. So now, of course, Seth Godin and I and anybody will caught anyone with ethics and morals is going to caution you against over going overboard. You want don't want to tell stories that are detrimental to people. So, for instance, uh, and I don't know if this is one in the book because I looked on my bookshelves for my copy of the book, and my copy of the book is gone. Um, you might know if you follow me that a couple of years ago when I moved, I downsized and got rid of half of my. I had like. I forget now, but I think I had like 13 or 14 floor to ceiling bookshelves full of books and they got down to like six of them when I moved. So got rid of a lot of books, a lot of courses, a lot of materials, either gave them away to clients or gave them away to, to people online or, or groups or whatever, or sold them or whatever I did. Uh, and I know that for the books at least, I can always get those back. I can get them on a Kindle. I can get them uh, on Amazon or in a bookstore. So, you know, no problem. Now I'm into the mode of not saving every book. I'll save the books that have reference value or ones that are so great that I want to read them over and over. This isn't one of them. It's a simple concept. And once you get it, pass that on to somebody. I would have passed it on to this client, but I'd already passed it on to another. So he went on and he, and he told me today, that's why this came to me, and, and no, I did not forget about you waiting till this late in the day to shoot the video, but he let me know, hey, thanks for the recommendation. He actually let my whole client group know in a private forum that I have set up for him. He's like, hey, thanks for the recommendation, Steve. Great book. And then other people are like, yeah, great book, great book. It is. It's a lot of fun. And again, you can make it as long or as short as you want. Once you get the concept, as long as you enjoy or you need it, rehashed over and over to sink in to read more case studies and examples over and over you can continue to read the book and again you'll read or you'll hear or you'll hear now about the caution you don't want to tell detrimental stories so I'll give you an example and I don't know if it's in the book but uh, back in the 50s and 60s cigarette companies there was a famous series of ads I forget what brand uh, I think let's just say camel and it was like uh, you know certain percentage or most doctors prefer camel now, that, what story was being told with those words and with those pictures of doctors smiling and smoking was, hey, this is healthy, it's good for you, doctors recommend You know, they didn't say plumbers recommend it. They didn't say, you know, uh, airline pilots recommend it or secretaries recommend it. They were very clear to say doctors recommend it because they're putting forth the story that it's not bad for you. See? Uh, even though there must have been rumors back then, and probably the people running these companies, if you see what happened later on and how it went to court, and there have been movies made about it, that they had studies and they knew it was detrimental to health. So that's where you go over the line and you become unethical, and that's why they got sued for billions of dollars and movies were made because the big tobacco, as it's known now, knew that it was doing bad by telling the stories they were telling by telling young kids that it was cool, and uh, by telling adults that doctors are smoking it, and so forth. So you don't want to do that, okay? But you want to tell effective stories, again, the emotional story behind why your product exists, why it does what it does, what it will do for people that use it, what it, and you can tell that in a case study and say, look what it did for this one person, even though it won't automatically do that for everybody because everybody won't make proper use out of the product or service. It's just the way it is. I just mentioned my consultant. Some people famously over the last decades have made tremendous use of my consultant have made millions and millions of dollars and retired early and sold their businesses for millions and changed their lives. Others have done nothing and have simply enjoyed it, like maybe you're enjoying this video, maybe you're not, but they say, oh, it was a great meeting, it was a great video, great seminar, took a lot of notes, got a great idea, Steve is brilliant, man, always gives me great ideas, always feel good, but then they don't go do anything. So uh, where was I on that? So, you know, but, but I tell the story, if I'm filling the room in a seminar, here's what you're going to learn, here's what you're going to get out of it, here's how your life is going to change, I'm going to transform your business with these concepts, it's not necessarily true. They're not going to transform their business with concepts unless they put the concepts to use, unless they put the concepts to use properly, which on their own, then a lot, you know, I, if I offer my help, a lot of most people, of course, will reject it and I'll do it on my own and make up any number of excuses, uh, time, money, energy, ego, whatever they think they can do it on their own, then invariably they either won't do it at all, they'll do it wrong, so they won't get those results. Am I going to stop telling those stories, success stories of my clients? I mean, if you read my magazine or you go to my website or you 
you look on YouTube, I got hundreds of testimonial videos and case studies of people very successful listening to me. You think I'm going to put some on there and say, hey, here's a person who, you know, read my stuff and came to my meetings and became a client and watched my books or did whatever, and then didn't get success? You think I'm going to tell that story? That's silly. Okay, so all marketers are liars. Seth Godin, in his attention getting way, is saying we got to be storytellers. Okay, now here's the thing. Hey, thanks for the likes. Uh, Jim is here. Rich Saucer is here. Great to see you. So here's an example. We have it right in front of us. The whole world has it right in front of us right now for it's been a year, and we got three more, or as he likes to say, seven more, because again, he's telling a great story. Hey, seven more. That's Donald Trump. It's the most powerful man in the world, right? Is a marketer. Pure and simple, he's a marketer. Been a marketer his whole life. Not going to change now. He's a marketer. He can say all he wants, oh, I'm going to be president. No, he's not going to be presidential. He's going to be a marketer. And if you listen to Seth Godin, all marketers are liars. They are. So here's the deal. Just about every day, probably multiple times a day if I really paid attention, Donald Trump says or does or both ridiculously outrageous ridiculous things he says and does. He makes crazy comments and outrageous claims that, of course, cannot possibly be true because he's a marketer. So all the anti-Trumpers get their panties in a bunch and go crazy on every tweet he does. I mean, it's like Donald Trump's holding up a treat and the press and the anti-Trumpers and the politicians and the, all the people that love the status quo and, hey, let's keep you know going off the deep end with America and we don't want to any change here because people don't want change so we don't want trump an outsider to come in and, and change things or an outsider to come in and show us insiders us establishment people that we suck so of course none of these people in power like trump so they'll all say hey, he's a liar look at him lying again he's lying and lying and they go off the deep end then on the other end there's the pro trumpers equally entertaining uh who come out everything trump says They'll never say he's lying. Like Trump, he's saying it like it is. He's a straight shooter. Trump is, you know, he's the man. He's telling it like it is. You know, he's 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 the most transparent, honest. We always know what he's thinking because he's on Twitter. He's honestly right out there. And he's saying what really needs to be done. Like, so they believe everything he says. The anti-Trumpers say everything he says is a lie. And they're both true, neither is true, whatever you want to believe. The the vast majority of rational, normal human beings that are in the middle, we just look and we say, like, Trump is Trump. And those of us that know marketing, again, remember, it's only 13% here in America, at least 13% of Americans own a business. The other 87% likely never to get it at all. They're not marketers. They're not selling or marketing anything. We all know in our business that, or you ought to know by now, that the success of your business is not going to be determined on how good your thing is that you're selling. It's going to be how good you market it, how great your marketing is. And that's what Trump's all about. So people go, you know, he's unhinged. He's deranged. He's incompetent. He's a fool. He's an idiot. He's senile. He's got dementia. He's he's a mar dude, he's a marketer. <laughs> it's just every I mean, so right now, what's in the news? The tax thing, right? What does Trump say like, hey, you know, we got a tax plan. Is it the greatest? No. Is it horrible? No. You know, there's good things about it. But no, Trump doesn't get to say that. Trump's going to go, this is the most historic tax cut in history. This is the greatest thing ever. How about Trump? He loves building up the military, right? He loves his war toys. So if Trump is trying to sell Congress, who, of course, has the, the you know, they hold our money, the taxpayers' money, and those of us that produce more value and therefore make more money might be the ones paying more taxes. And therefore, you know, he's he, we're the, he's got more of our money than of the anti-Trumper and the broke people that, uh, you know, ooh, uh, but anyway, he's got to sell building up the military, right? So does he say, uh, here's a straight fact that uh, we, I, don't, I should have looked it up, but it's something like, we outspend the next 10 countries combined on the military. Like, we have by far the most powerful military in the history of the world, like, by far. So does Trump come out and say, hey, you know, even if we cut the military budget in half, we would still have the most power. In fact, if we destroyed half of our planes and, and, and ships and bombs and whatever and cut all our personnel and cut down everything, we would still be the most powerful military of all time there. He's not going to say that. That doesn't help him to sell the concept to the con to the Congress and to the people that, hey, 
we've got to build up the military. So what does he say? He comes out and says, oh, the military was decimated over the last eight years, decimated. It was beyond weak, beyond compare, the weakest it's ever been. He's, that's, he's Trump. He's a marketer. He's telling the story. It's got to get attention. It's got to be effective. He's a marketer. So you can watch and hate him and go off the deep end. And, and, and every time Trump says something inflammatory, it's like holding up a treat and all the anti-Trumpers will roll over and beg and cry and moan and sit and do whatever he wants them to do. They get triggered every single time. The pro-Trumpers will sit there and go, yeah, he's right. The military was decimated. we got to build it up. Give me a break. He's marketing. He's selling his concept that we've got to spend bazillions, trillions, billions, however many dollars on some more war toys. Oh, we got to update the whatever. Oh, and and you know, oh, how can we send? We've been sending our men into battle without the best equipment. We got to get them the best equipment. That's the right thing to do for these men and women that give themselves to the country and sacrifice. Right, that sounds great. That's all. Great. Who's gonna Who's gonna disagree? Even the anti try, even anti war people. How are they gonna do? Oh no, I think you should send our our young men and women into battle with crappy gear. I mean, it's hard to to resist such a great marketed, a, a tremendously uh, um, uh, well marketed story as. How can you send our young people into battle without the best protective gear? They got to have the right Kevlar, this and the right helmets and the best equipment and what whatever and the best training. What they got? Of course. And and hey, and, and what is Trump going to say? Oh, the the ISIS, you know, the the terrorism is is horrible. It's it's unbelievable, and we got to stop them from coming here. So we got to have a travel ban. We got to build a wall. We got to. We got to vet people. We got to throw people out of the country. that are illegal aliens. We got all this under the guise of security because he's telling that story to a segment of America that is afraid that foreigners are going to come in and blow us up and run over us and take our jobs and do what. Great story. You got to tell this story. Now, if you're on the other side, then you want to tell the story of like, yeah, but we're America. America is the land that everybody want to come to, and we're so rich, and we're the richest country on earth, so let's take care of these people. we got plenty of jobs to, that they'll do that Americans won't. we got plenty of places they can live. we got the government has money to, to feed them. I mean, one war plane could feed a million immigrants. and we, You'll tell that story. Okay, So every side has to always tell a story and not just come out and say, the fact is we need to do this. Well, the same thing in your business, right? So understand you have a prime example. So every day you can wake up and you can wonder what ridiculous thing Trump said today. And then you can just, because he does, and pretty much, and then you, you can decide, am I going to be an anti-Trumper and get my panties in a bunch and call him a liar? Am I going to be a pro-Trumper and say he's not lying and he's telling it like it is? And both are off the deep end. Are you going to look at it and say, wow, another great example? By the way, it isn't just Trump. It's all the Congress. I'm looking at the anti-Trumpers in the Congress saying, like, we can't pass this tax bill because people will die. Lots of people are going to die because of this. Right? They can't just say, like, uh, you know, do they uh, Armageddon. I saw a clip with Nancy. Pl it's going to be Armageddon. If it, Arm it's going to be Armageddon if the tax bill passes. I'll give you a hint. The tax bill is going to pass. And then is Armageddon, I think it literally means the earth ends. I mean, so does anyone look and go, Pelosi is a liar. She's exaggerating. The earth isn't going to end. Of course, she's marketing her position. She's convincing her base and her supporters and the anti-Trumpers that like Trumpers and all Republicans, all conservatives are evil. They want to kill people. They want to push grandma off the cliff. Like this is going to kill. See, I got, a I got an email today. It was a letter from the dean of the Boston College Law School that I graduated from in 1985, and for some reason he felt compelled to send this letter out, and I was just laughing. He, this, I wish I had it up on the screen here, but it was like, oh, this is going to be detrimental to those of us that value higher education. I'm like, oh, no, no. Entrepreneurs value higher education, not schooling. Okay, get out in the real world and do something. Okay, I wasted those years going to too much school. What a mistake. Uh, I know I'm not in favor of encouraging other people to make the same mistake, but he's like, oh, if this tax bill passes, it, it won't allow for the deduction for student loans or or for the endowment to, to this and then whatever. It, it might, it, it'll mean we'll need to raise costs for higher education. I'm like, great story. That's a great story. Raise costs for higher education. I mean, 
I'm getting on a tangent here, but it's an example. I mean, if you looked it up, again, I didn't look this up before I record this, but isn't something like the cost of higher education, the tuition for colleges, has gone up like three or four times, six times the level of inflation? Like, and here's a dean of a school having the nerve or the smarts to tell people, hey, we're going to have to raise costs if this goes through. See? So now he's justifying another ridiculous increase in tuition for overpaid, bloated salaries to ridiculous professors or whatever that are, you know, keeping people out of the workforce for three or four more years when they could be producing for society, but instead, like I did, just sitting there, you know, basically partying and drinking beer and waiting for the next football game on a Saturday and being in college. And then, oh, there's three weeks left, we better study. And, you know, so, but anyway, so whatever side you're on and whatever you're selling, you sell it with emotional stories. So that's it for Foundation Fridays. Foundational tip. Unfortunately, I find very, very, very small percentage of people, and that includes business owners, understand this. They sell by saying, here's how good our product is. Even worse, they talk about themselves. We've been around this long. We're family-owned or operated. I'm licensed and bonded and whatever. And that's it. And that's all they talk about. Like, you can talk about that stuff. Sure, put the bullet points somewhere in your ad or on your website. But grab people with a story. Tell a story. Videos are great for that. In fact, get on a video and tell your story. And then put that video on your website and put it out everywhere and put links to it in your email. I mean, tell the story. Why do you exist? What do you do? What emotional benefit do people get by doing business with you? That's what you got to do. That's what Seth Godin taught. That's the book I recommended to a client who, like a dream client, says, man, I got that book you recommended. Great book. Now I'm getting it. And we got to tell the right story to sell my product or service. Because he has an excellent product or service. I call that the ante to get in the game. Not how you sell. You don't sell to have an excellent product or service. Of course you have an excellent product or service. Now let's sell it. And let's sell it by telling stories. Or as Seth Godin puts it, by lying and not going off the deep end and hurting people with lies or telling things that are completely untrue. You simply tell the story. And again, we have the great example. We see Donald Trump. Okay, who else is here? Rich is here. Rich says, has a birthday party in progress. Happy birthday, Rich. Just kidding. I know your birthday was, I think your birthday is right around the same time as mine. I forget, but I know it was, uh, it passed recently. So I know it's, it's when your kids are, cousins or kids that you help or whatever it is, go have fun. And uh, thanks to uh, Jim also for being here and anybody watching on the replay. I don't see any questions, comments, concerns, issues, lies, stories, exaggerations, unhinged. I don't think you should be impeached. Uh, You should be, uh, you have dementia, you are uh, incompetent. Uh, You know, uh, if, if you tell stories effectively in your business, maybe you'll get all that kind of backlash from people. Maybe we'll say, man, that guy is unhinged. He has dementia. He's incompetent. He's a fool. He's an idiot. I love that one. Trump's an idiot. This is almost, by own definition, it is said by somebody who's more of an idiot than Trump would ever be. This is a person who, like, makes a hell of a lot less money than Trump. He has a lot less power than Trump. He has a hell of a lot less fun in his life than Trump. He's a lot less exciting things going on in his life, and yet Trump must be the idiot. That's right. So understand that when you tell stories, people are going to complain and come at you and whatever. You're also going to have a lot of fun, make a lot of money, transform your life, and basically stay in business. You're not going to stay in business or thrive if you don't learn how to do this or hire someone that does. Okay, A lot of companies just hire marketing agencies to do their marketing because they just can't figure out how to tell stories effectively. So either get someone to do it, do it yourself, but it's got to be done. All marketers are, in fact, great storytellers. And that's it for Foundation Friday. We'll be back tomorrow with Success Story Saturday. I hope you'll join me then. Bye-bye.